don't throw it out. You could actually use these to create little watering cans to water your plants. It's really easy to do. I'm gonna show you how to put it together. So you're going to need a drill for this and put a drill bit on your drill. The size really depends on how big you want the holes to be in the top of your lid. So what I'm gonna do is if you unscrew the lid, you can kind of see where the openings are. So I'm gonna put a few holes right here in the center portion where the S is. Now I'm just gonna brush off this extra right here. So now I have a watering can that I can store underneath my kitchen sink. Let me show you how I water my plants with this. This is definitely one of my favorite hacks. I love how compact it is. A lot of times watering cans can be really big and bulky. So I love this idea, plus you recycle a container. A lot of us have long dresses that just hang down too low and we can't put anything underneath there. So to fix that problem, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your dress that's on a long hanger and then you're going to add an additional hanger. Then what you could do is you can loop the bottom part of your dress through the lower hanger. And then when you hang it up, it's not gonna take any more room and it's gonna keep that lower part of your dress off the ground. You guys already know that the lids on these are super cool, but did you know that the lid on a Parmesan container will fit onto a mason jar? When I found this out, I was blown away. So you can put sugar or any items in here, transfer your lid to your mason jar, and then you can just keep this in your pantry and then sprinkle out a little bit when you need it. So a lot of times my kids will say, mom, do you have a four by six frame? Mom, do you have a five by seven frame? And I'm like, okay, well, we'll just go to the thrift store. The thrift store, you can buy these frames for a dollar. I recently needed a five by seven frame, went to the thrift store, found one for a dollar. It wasn't the color that I wanted it to be, but that was no problem. I just painted it with two coats of this nomadic desert paint. So for a dollar plus paint that you probably already have on hand, you can have a new picture frame. There's no need to go and spend full price. One of my most requested videos is to do more wall art. And while I love to create wall art, sometimes you want different prints or nice pictures. I really like to scour the thrift store for prints. Now I would say about 98% of what I see at the thrift store, I wouldn't buy unless I recreated it myself. But every once in a while, I will find a really cool print. When I was at my last thrift store, I found this print. It was $20 and I just really liked it. I thought about maybe changing the frame. I didn't know if I liked the gold frame. In the end, I left it. I may still paint it black. I haven't decided on it, but you know I can always change that. But I love the picture exactly how it was. So don't forget to consider your thrift store when looking for prints. Now I wanted to pair this print with another print on this dresser that I had in the corner of my living room. So I already had this large frame from Ikea. It's just a white large frame, probably around $20, but I didn't have have a print in it and I wanted something super neutral nothing that was gonna be too crazy so here's my next hack you're going to get a piece of fabric it can be any piece of fabric but it's a really inexpensive way to fill up a print so I went to Joann's I found this print that I really liked I grabbed a yard of it which was more than what I needed I think it was around seven dollars a yard because I got a clearance piece of fabric all you have to simply do is add it to the back you can put some tape on it to hold it in place and frame it up and that's the picture I used to complement the one I got from the thrift store. Just goes away. 
So our next hack is gonna be with my bread that I got from my Walmart Plus order. Now, a lot of times you guys know these little bread ties, they fall off, they're not reliable. I mean, who really likes these? I know my kids lose them all the time. So here's a solution to keep your bread fresh if you lose this or just don't wanna spend time, you know, twisting this around there, that's no fun. So take your bread bag and then what you're gonna do is just give it like a quick twist. Then you're gonna take this upper portion here and you're just going to simply pull it down over your bread. Look at how tight and compact that is. It took me, you know, a couple of seconds to do. Love that. So I have a DIY hack for you guys. If you're hanging a picture on the wall, you know sometimes you have to like put your hammer down and like fish around for your nails. Well, here's a little hack to make sure you always have your nails with your hammer. So you're gonna get a circular magnet. I'll link to the ones down in the description box that I'm using, and I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of my hammer. gonna add some nails to the bottom of this magnet. Now when I go to hang something on the wall, I can have my hammer in one hand and just pull a nail off. Next hack we're actually gonna do in my living room. So over here in the corner, I have this gorgeous plant. It has a pot at the bottom. It also has this moss around the top. And then it's a pretty plant. This is from Target, but you guys, this plant costs $150. And if you don't wanna spend $150, I'm gonna show you how to get this look for a lot less. Now this plant is actually from Ikea. It's around $50. I bought it probably a couple years ago, but you can see it doesn't have a nice pot with it, but it's a pretty plant and it's a good height. So what I bought to go along with it is a planter that I picked up from Dollar General. This was $14. You can see I still have the price on it. Now what's going to really set it over the edge is getting some moss. I bought this off of Amazon. I'll link it for you down in the description box. Along with anything in this video, you guys, including like what I'm wearing, all that stuff, it'll be in the description box. Let me show you how to put this together and make it look similar to the other plant that I have. All right, so I'm just gonna start by putting my plant into the planter. If you wanted your plant to sit up taller, you could do that as well. Just put some books or a rock base or something to hold it up higher, but I'm okay with it being at this level. Next, I'm going to get this foam moss. Now, let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna take it out of the plastic. What's cool about this is it's foam moss and then it's on like a styrofoam sheet. So if you had a round planter, you could always cut it to fit in. This actually fits into my container perfectly, you guys. Like it's kind of crazy how well it fits. So what I'm gonna do is since I want this to sit in the center, I'm actually gonna cut a slit probably right here till I get to the middle. And then I'm gonna try to wrap it around my stem and then press it into my planter. So if all goes well, it should work out. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut to about right here. You can also use a knife to kind of cut through the back of it as well. Now that I have cut about halfway down, I'm gonna put it around the stem. So as I was starting to put this on there, it was damaging because it didn't want to get around the stem. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it completely in half and then I'm going to hot glue the sides together. So to do that, I'm just going to take my knife and just go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so the next step, I'm just gonna cut like a little circle on the edge here so that both of these moss pieces will sit around my stem. All right, so now that we have everything cut in our opening, I'm gonna put them back into my container. That side is fitting really well. Let's see how I did over here. I'm just gonna try to match them back up as best as I can. We may not even need to glue these together. 
So these fit really tight together. If yours were a little bit looser, you could always add glue here. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Liz, what are you gonna do with all this white foam? So I do have some little pieces that I cut off like that, that I'm gonna try to put back on here to make it look nice. I also have some Dollar Tree moss that I may add around the base here. So I'm gonna try to clean it up just a little bit. So this is covered up most of the area. Now I'm gonna add in some moss around the edge just so it looks intentional like I meant to have it there. So I'm just gonna push some moss in between here until I'm happy with the overall look of it. So one of my favorite live things to have in my house is eucalyptus. I love the way it smells, it lasts forever, and when it dries, it's still really nice. And the place that I have found that you can pick up eucalyptus is at Trader Joe's. I usually pick up a couple of bundles whenever I go, and they're $3.99 each. And it's so easy to style eucalyptus in any vase. I have it in the one on my coffee table. I tell you, it's gonna smell so good. It makes my living room smell awesome. I've been trying to use my power drill a lot more lately, and I've been trying to learn some different hacks to really help me, you know, do a better job. Sometimes when you're drilling through a piece of wood, you'll have wood splitting on the back side because your drill goes in and it splits the wood, and nobody wants their wood splitting. So this hack is if you take another piece of wood and put it underneath the wood that you're drilling and then drill through, it will avoid that splitting in your board. I think this is a really great idea. So just have like a scrap board that you can use whenever you're drilling. You guys are gonna love this next hack. So how many times have you pulled out your aluminum foil and this piece just comes out and it's just a mess and everything's all over the place? Well, I saw this hack on TikTok and I think it's pretty genius. So did you know that on the side of your aluminum foil, there's these little, circles here that you can press in. So you just pop them in like this and it's gonna hold your aluminum foil in place. You can do it on that side and then you do it on this side as well. So just pop that in. Now, anytime you wanna pull out your aluminum foil, it's gonna stay in place. How genius is that? Let me know in the comments if you guys knew about this hack. This next hack is a really cool safety tip. When you're nailing a nail into the wall, have you ever slipped and actually hit the hammer on your finger? It does not feel good. What you can do instead is get some chopsticks. Now with your chopsticks, you're gonna leave them together. Then you're just going to slip your nail into the center of your chopsticks. That way, when you're nailing it on the wall, you can keep your fingers at a safe distance while you put it on the wall. And then once the nail's in there, you just slide the chopsticks right off. Since my job is DIY decorating, you guys, I am constantly looking at home decor. I was on someone's Instagram page and they had these over the top high end terracotta pots. Both of them were over a hundred dollars. They looked amazing. They were definitely something I wanted in my home, but was I going to spend over a hundred dollars for terracotta pots? Absolutely not. So when I was at the thrift store, I started looking for the shape of pot that I wanted. I came across this set and you know, these were probably popular 
color maybe like 15 years ago with this red and then this kind of natural look at the bottom. But the shape of these pots were so similar to that terracotta pot that I really wanted. I went ahead and grabbed these. Now, they were kind of pricey at my thrift store. Like the larger pot was $18. I think the smaller one was five. When I think about the fact that the ones that I was looking for were both over $100, I thought, okay, you know, it's definitely making the look for a lot less. Whenever you're trying to recreate a look, you want to really pay attention to the texture and the colors that you see in that piece. So there was a lot of like terracotta colors and whites and a variety of colors. So I picked up a variety of paints. I had a terracotta, then I had a lighter shade of terracotta as well as a white and some spackling. I started by painting the top portion where it was red just with that terracotta color. Now this is one of those pieces that you're gonna kind of build on depending how it looks. Then I added some spackling to the bottom. Then I tried to really merge those two colors. So I added in that lighter terracotta color. I also came in with some white and I just added paint until it looked natural. Sometimes we stop at maybe those first two coats and it doesn't look really natural. You want your paints to be really blended in so that they just look natural and great. So here's a look at how these turned out. Now, are they as good as the $100 pots? Maybe not, but do they look great? Do I love the way they look on my mantle? Yes. Don't be afraid to try to recreate those looks that you love. So recently I wanted to do some touch up paint in my house. So I went out to my garage, found the paint can that I needed, brought it back in, opened it up and it was gloopy. It was just not great. It really hadn't been stored well and it just wasn't usable anymore. And it was probably only a couple of years old. So I thought, you know, there's gotta be a better solution for storing paint, keeping it fresh longer. I found this hack where somebody said, use reusable jars to store your excess paint. And I thought, that's a great idea. So I had this old jar from my Walmart Plus order that I created, and I'm just gonna use it to store some of my excess paint in here and it has a nice tight lid on it so it's gonna last longer it's glass I can also write on the top where the paint goes in my house so I can easily find this so love this idea I'm gonna be trying this out and seeing if it works seeing if my paint actually holds up so I'm gonna show you guys a simple vase hack using a toothbrush holder. You can buy these at Dollar Tree. You can also pick them up at the thrift store. I thought this one was really cute, so we're gonna use it for this hack. The cool thing about a toothbrush holder is it has holes to put in your stems. So I have these stems that I picked up from Walmart. You can use anything for this. And you're just gonna use the holes in the toothbrush holder to place in your stems. This is going to keep them upright and also nice and divided. You can put all your stems in there and then go back in and fluff them out so they make a nice arrangement. I think this is one of the coolest hacks I've seen in a while. I saw on TikTok. I'm not really sure if it's gonna work, but I can't wait to try it out. And if you guys aren't already following me on TikTok, I have two accounts. One is my Liz Fenwick DIY account where I post all of my DIYs when we go shopping. So follow me there. The other one is called Liz Fenwick and I share with you all of my favorite Amazon finds. So make sure you follow me on both accounts. Now for this hack, you're gonna need any jar in your kitchen. I had this one. I just washed it out really quick. The first thing you're gonna do is just remove the label. Hello, 
All right, now this back label is a little bit harder to remove, so I'm gonna run some hot water on it just to kind of loosen up the glue underneath. Now here's where the actual hack comes in. Once you get the labels off the jar, a lot of times you're left with all that sticky residue on the front and the back. So you're going to need to get any kind of nail varnish and some cotton balls. And you're just gonna use that to take off the rest of the sticky residue. So it definitely works on that front label. Now I'm gonna try this back one that kind of looks crazy. Okay, so this side definitely doesn't want to come off as easily, but I do feel like it's removing it. It just takes a little bit of scrubbing on it. All right, I'm gonna get some more nail polish remover. It definitely is working. Now, it did take a little bit of scrubbing to get that white label off, first the one on the front. From there, you can rinse them out. You can use them to store items. You can also use them to display flowers or really just a bunch of different things around your house. I know there's products out there that take off labels, but this is typically something you have around your house. So if you're in a pinch, try it. Now to style this jar, I have some florals from Dollar Tree. I just bought these this spring, so you can still pick them up. I also found these lentils in my pantry. So I'm gonna use these kind of as like a rock base and I'm just gonna pour them at the bottom of my jar. I'm trying to use things that are around my house. I literally just went and grabbed these. Okay, so next I'm gonna put in the florals. Now with Dollar Tree florals and any florals, just kind of spread them out a little bit before you start sticking them in. That way they look fuller. Okay, so looking at this, I don't really like that you can see the stems. You guys will have to let me know if I should have left it this way, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put some more items I had in my pantry. I think this is quinoa. And I'm just going to put a layer of this on top of my lentils. Then it's going to disguise my stems whenever I put them back in. All right, let me show you how I style this in my living room. All right, so you guys may be wondering about this dresser that I have over on the side of my fireplace. Now, yes, it looks nice, but it also serves a purpose. And the purpose of this one is to hide our electronics. You have to have some kind of cabinet or dresser to hide all these things. So all of our internet, the components for our TV, we just took the back off this dresser. We put them into a drawer. We don't have to have the wires out. We don't have to have it showing. It's just a really easy way to tuck it away, but we can also get to to them when we need to. This next hack involves denture cleaners. So I buy a lot of glassware at the thrift store and it gets really dirty. Here's a simple way that you can clean your glassware and shine it up really pretty to use. This also works really well if you have glassware that has stains on it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill up your containers with water. So I'm gonna put in warm water. Now these were containers I recently picked up at the thrift store and they just need to be cleaned out. Then you're gonna take a denture cleaning tablet and you're gonna drop it into the glass. We're gonna let that soak for like three to five minutes and come back and see how well they're cleaned out. So the cleaner's been dissolving for about five minutes now, so I'm gonna rinse it out with a little bit of water. Then I'll use a microfiber towel to dry it and I'll show you how good they look. Great. They are sparkling. They are clean. Let me know in the comments if you guys have used denture cleaner to clean or remove stains from anything. I think they would be great for wine glasses or different glassware that's got stains on it.
One of the things I find most annoying about using tape that's on a roll like this, this is actually some painter's tape, is every time I wanna use it, I have to fish the end of it out and like right there you can see how it just tore in half. I have a hack for you that's going to keep your tape ready to go all the time. So for this hack, you're gonna need some paper clips. These are from Dollar Tree, but you really only need one for this hack. This is super simple, but when you're done using your tape, instead of just pushing it down, you're going to take a paper clip and you're just going to put it on the end of your tape. That way, the next time you wanna use it, it's completely ready to go. You don't have to worry about pulling it up. This next hack is a really cool way to get your flour into your bowl. So you're going to need a whisk, which is probably what you're gonna be using to mix everything up anyways. So you're gonna take your whisk and stick it straight down into your flour. What this is going to do is actually load the flour up into your whisk so that when you pull it out, you have a bunch of flour and you can just put it into your bowl. Let's try that again. This is definitely a no mess way to transfer your flour to your bowl. So this next hack is a fun way to share with guests at your home your Wi-Fi code. Now, I know a lot of times people will ask like, what's your Wi-Fi password? You can go to a QR code creating website and you could type in your information for your personal Wi-Fi and then you can print out a personalized QR code. Now, I took that QR code and I brought it into Word, take your QR code add it with some text, and then you're going to print it out on your regular printer. Next, you can just cut this out and add it to a frame. I'm adding it to that $1 frame that we created earlier, and you could have this sitting out in your guest room, you could have it sitting out you know, down in your living space, but if anybody needs to know your Wi-Fi, they can just scan that and have access to your Wi-Fi. I don't know about you guys, but it takes me forever to go through a bag of lemons. So if I buy them at the store and I want them to last for months, I don't wanna store them like this. Let me show you the hack for how you should be storing your lemons in the fridge. So grab a jar that has a lid. This one is pretty inexpensive from Ikea. And then all you're gonna do is place your lemons inside. Next, you're just going to fill it with water up until all the lemons are covered. Now you can just store your lemons like this in the fridge and they'll last for months. Using wood items in your decor is honestly a really popular thing to do right now. I really like the look of wood bowls. I feel like they add a little bit of different dimension. They're not necessarily a pot, so they're great to put out on those large books that we were talking about earlier. You can buy these wood bowls at the thrift store for a couple of dollars, if not a dollar. This is how I styled it sitting out on my dresser, and I just think they look nice. You could also put these at an entry table to maybe collect keys or things when you first walk in. So this next hack is a party hack that you can try for your next party. So this is a way to tie balloons. Now I know I struggle with tying balloons, especially when I have nails on. So for this hack, you're gonna blow up your balloon, then you're gonna get an old hanger, you're gonna wrap your balloon around the hanger, and then pull it through. It's going to create a nice area where you can easily tie your balloon. I think this hack is genius and I really think it's gonna save me time at parties. trash can hack that I think works really well in your bathroom. If you've ever worried about your trash can smelling, you wanna get some essential oils. You can use any that you like. This set I have linked down below. This has lasted me forever. So you want to pick out your favorite scent. I'm actually going to use the lemon and then you also need a cotton ball. You could probably use like 
anything like a cotton pad as well. And I'm just gonna put a few drops of the essential oil onto my cotton ball. And then all you have to do is put this at the bottom of your trash can. And then you'll put your bag on top. This is gonna help your trash stay smelling fresh. If you love DIY and home hack videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Just hit that little red button. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So another trick I like to use whenever I'm decorating a space is to save money wherever I can. You guys know I love doing it on a budget. And something that costs quite a bit of money are lamps. And I think lamps are a little overpriced. So I love going to the thrift store. My local thrift store usually sells lamps for around $8. I found this lamp and thought, you know, we can definitely update this. I wanted the base of it to have a real textured look. So I added some of my Nomadic Desert paint and I mixed it with salt. That's just going to add like a grainy texture. I painted two coats on the entire piece. Now on the base, I added that terracotta color. And once I did that, I really didn't like the look of it. So I knew I was gonna change that up. So I have this new spray paint. It's so cool, you guys. It's called Stone. And I've been wanting an excuse to try this out and just love the way it looked. I sprayed some of the stone around the edge of this lamp. And oh my goodness, like I just love the cool look that it gives. Let it completely dry. I added back on the lamp shade and here's a look at how it turned out. I can't decide if I like the lighter color or if I should make it black. I kind of want to paint it black, but you know, either way it'll work. Let me know in the comments, you guys, should I keep it this tan color or paint this piece black? Our next hack is for making your planters you have a little bit taller and a little bit more substantial. So I have this plant at my office that I just kind of stuck in a basket. It doesn't really look cute in there and I need to fix it and make it look better. So what you want to do is you want to start by putting some books down at the bottom, something that it can sit on. You can also add in, you know, Walmart sacks, plastic bags. Then put your plant on when it's at the height that you want it to be at. Then you can add in anything to create a nice filler. You could add in moss, you could add in rocks, really whatever you want to top it off. But what this is going to do is it's going to raise the height of your plant. So it's gonna make it look like a bigger plant and it's gonna make it look nice if anybody like looks into the basket. If you guys have kids or grandkids who are obsessed with poppets like my kids are, here is a really fun snack you have to try for them. So what you're gonna need is a poppet. You're also going to need some blueberries or any other fruit, but blueberries will probably work the best. And then any kind of yogurt that you wanna use. So I'm gonna start by putting the blueberries in each of the poppet holes. Make sure that you have them popped all down the same way. Next, you're gonna take your yogurt and just spread it across the top. Now I'm just going to take this, pop it in the freezer until it sets up and it's completely frozen. This next hack is perfect for securing your chips. So I grabbed these poppables in my Walmart Plus order. And after you open a bag of chips, you know, a lot of times we'll do, you know, like one of these and put a little clip in it. And sometimes it falls off, sometimes, you know, it stays, but it's just not super fresh. So here is the trick that I learned. So take your container, and you can do this when it's pretty full because, I mean, let's be honest, we don't get too much product. Then you're gonna just grab your pair of scissors and you're gonna cut a triangle out of your bag like this, okay? So this is what your bag's gonna look like. 
What that does is it creates two little handles that you're going to tie in a knot. So you're gonna take your two handles and pull one under the other and you're gonna pull tight. You've created a nice tight seal for your chip bags. Love this and you don't have to have one of these anymore. One of my favorite kitchen hacks is hanging up my oven mitts. I love to put a command strip on the back of my cabinet. I've done this for years. And then most oven mitts come with a little handle on it. You can hang them on there. That way you don't have to waste any space in your drawers. Now, if you're new to following me, you may not be aware that I actually go live on Amazon weekly. I share some of my favorite Amazon products and fashion, beauty, like Amazon gadgets, DIY organization. So if you click the link down in the description box, it'll take you to my Amazon lives. And if you just hit that little X button to follow me, you'll get notified anytime that I go live. I wanted to show you guys a few of the items that I found on Amazon that make my life so much easier. Now, the first one is this product called Bagnet. I recently found this. And this thing is so cool. This is a multifunctional bag hanger. It holds up to eight pounds. It fits onto your purse. It has this little opening here so you can slide it onto your purse. It has a really strong magnet in here so you can put it on bar stools, you can put it on your fridge, basically anything that's magnetic so that when you're out, you don't have to place your bag on the floor. I love this invention and my bag is full of stuff and it held it up perfectly. This is also great when you're at the gym or in restrooms or sporting events or anywhere where you just don't want your bag sitting on the floor. You can just keep this on your bag. You never know when you're gonna be in those situations where you need to use something like this. Another product that I found on Amazon, if you have a stove like I do that has an upper portion like this, I found this stove shelf that is magnetic and it fits right on top of my stove. This shelf is great because it actually gives me another surface where I can put spices, I can put my little timer, really anything that I need to set up there while I'm cooking. So love organization hacks that give me more space. So a lot of times I'll be shopping online, looking online at high-end stores and I'll think, wow, I love the way that vase looks or how did they create that? And a lot of times it's just about finding the right shape and creating it yourself. So I needed a pot for my olive tree that was up on my mantle because I just wanted a new look for it. So I found this pot at the thrift store and thought, you know, I'm gonna try to make it look a little bit more high-end, a little bit more muted and that color scheme that I was going for. So I started by adding some spackling to the outside of it. I didn't cover the whole thing with spackling, but it just added enough texture and color. Once that completely dried, I came back in and added a green muted color that I'm using for this fall. I didn't even paint the whole piece. I just kind of did it sporadically. let that dry and then I added in my olive tree. It completely updated the look of this and I love the way it looks now. If in your house or your kid's room, you have an excess amount of stuffed animals, pillows, blankets, and you need somewhere to store them, that's actually functional. I found this hack and it's a beanbag hack. So I picked up this large beanbag off of Amazon that you can just fill up with things you have around your house. So I'm gonna show you how you can fill it up with pillows, but if your kids have a ton of stuffed animals, you can put those in here as well. We would do this until we couldn't do it. Each and every literally fit every single pillow in my living room and blanket. So I'm just gonna zip it up. So I'm gonna flip it back here. Now you have a fun beanbag chair that you can sit in. This would be perfect for your kid's room, basement, and you're storing all that stuff that was just sitting out or maybe in a drawer taking up a lot of room. 
So there's no need to buy a fancy trash can for your car. I think one of the best options is to get one of these style of containers. This one's actually from Ikea. You can buy them at Dollar Tree as well. You want a container that has one of these flip top lids on one side. So with this container, all I'm going to do is get a small trash bag and I'm gonna put it into my container. Then I'll just pull the outside. Okay. <laughs> so then I'm just gonna take the trash can, put it around the top, and then put the lid back on. You can put this in your car. Anytime you have any trash, you just throw it in there. If you don't have a fancy bag like this, you could always use a Dollar Tree sack as well. Put a few of your Dollar Tree sacks at the bottom. That way you always have a trash can and just pull it out whenever it gets full.